Hello guys and welcome to a quick review. Um, it's of a strange one, it's of a USB dongle. Um, but I'm going to show you um, a cool little thing you can do with this. It's called an SDR um, dongle, USB stick. Um, it's got the RTL2832 chips in it and the R820T. What this does is it does um, a thing called SDR, it picks up SDR, which is software defined radio. Um, it scans the airwaves and you can pick up uh, amateur broadcasts on shortwave. Um, you can listen in to beacons um, and lo loads, a whole, whole host of, uh, of little things. You can go on a program called HDSDR. Well, there's a load of them actually, and you can sit there and scan through them and listen to what you want, which is all great. Well, what's this got to do with FPV? Well, the thing that you can that this thing actually does is it scans the megahertz waves. It goes from 25 to 1750 megahertz, which is 1.7 gigs basically. Uh, 1.75 gigs. So that covers all your UHF band and it also covers your 900 megahertz video frequencies, your uh, 1.2 and 1.3 as well. So this thing could be useful if you could utilize it. Um, it works basically like an RF Explorer, but we know the price of an RF Explorer, the price of this is $17.95. So there's something good that could be done with this. Yes, it might not be as accurate, but for $17, it's probably worth a punt. Right, so what do you get? You get the dongle itself, neatly packaged, well made, quite sturdy. You get the wire and you get a generic antenna for it for shortwave reception which is all good you get the remote control as well as I'm not using any of the radio stations don't need the remote so that can go the antenna is all good for general use but again we want to fine tune it for what we were doing so I've cut the ends off and I've put a female SMA bulkhead on the end so I can just simply undo whichever antenna I want in this case the generic one and get rid so now I can plug whatever I want in it for the demonstration I'm going to use a that's a team black sheep coiled dipole for the crossfire uh, we can use 1.2 rubber duck that some people use some people don't but you can plug in whichever one you want uh, a slightly battered sander style 433 monopole there so we can plug whichever one we want in I will screw in that crossfire antenna and there we go, we're pretty much ready to go. Okay, here we go with the software side of it. I'm going to put three links in the description below. Touchstone, which is the one you want for FPV, HDSDR and Zadig. Touchstone is going to be the spectrum analyzer we're interested in that makes it into basically an RF Explorer. That's the one you want. The Zadig is a driver installer. Um, I'm going to show you this because the driver installer won't initiate because I've already installed it on here. You do need the driver inst installer if you're going to use HDSDR. HDSDR um, allows you to scan and listen into all the amateur uh, broadcasts, uh, all the ham stuff that you can do with this dongle. FPV wise you probably won't be interested in it but it's there anyway. If you do use this you do need that installer. Now when you first launch Touchstone it will ask you about a driver so I'm going to show you from this point of view. It's the same program but it's just presented differently in the Touchstone installer. Um, in this case go to options, list all devices, from the drop down menu you want RTL 2838. Windows, when you first plug the dongle in, will put a driver in it'll say it's perfectly fine. It's not, it doesn't work. So in the current driver you'll have something different written in here. Um, you might not be able to see that anyway. But um, it will all, it will tell you to put WinUSB V6 1.7600 in. That is the right one. So you just click on install driver if you're using this package. If you're using Touchstone, it gives you three options for a driver, USB and you want the RTL one. Uh, that's, it's the only one with RTL written on it and you can't go wrong. Right, we'll launch Touchstone. Uh, 
Touchstone's available in two formats, free and $50. The $50 one comes with extra features, but none of it is needed for what we're going to do, so just go for the free option. It will load up. And there we go, we've got the spectrum trace view, we've got a waterfall history. We have our frequency in megahertz, we have our signal strength in dBm. The waterfall's all pretty, but we don't need that in the slightest. On the right hand side, we have the start and end scan settings. These are the ones you want, and you always want to do your end first. Because if you do your start, it'll just come up with an error because the sweep's too large. So you click on cancel to, to clear it, and then we're doing the Team Black Sheep Crossfire which is running on 868 megahertz. So we'll start, we'll uh, end the scan at 900 megahertz. That's plenty. So click on OK, 900 changes down here. At the top, to make the scan a lot smaller, we'll go to, uh, sorry, we'll click cancel to clear it. 800 megahertz. OK, so that's it. Our scaling's changed there. Then you click on start. It'll, every current scan is in gray, which you'll see, there's a gray one. Then your maximums are in red, and that's why it's changed it to red. Your last scan was in green, and then your grey is your current. So as it goes along, there'll be three colours, then grey will disappear and it'll do a new scan. As you can see right now, my noise floor is pretty damn good. It's, well, it should be the Faraday gauge of a flat this place. But uh, 110, minus 110 dBm is my noise floor, which is pretty good. So that's with the crossfire off. I'll turn the crossfire on, and then what we're looking for is it should uh, around 860 to 870, the channels should bounce up here. So we'll turn it on. You turn me on. Manual mode. Oh, and there we go. We'll get a more accurate scan now. Yeah, and then I'll change your peaks to red, your last scans to green. And we'll just set that there. So there, there you can see it's scanning, scanning the cross fire, and it's picking up all the different channels. And you can see it's bounced up to, um, well, it's on average minus eighty uh, dBm, and that's with the transmitter set at five hundred milliwatts. We'll. Uh, Knock the power down. I'll knock the power down to 10 milliwatts. And then you should see the graph, the grey in the graph. There you go. It's much, much lower now. There you can see it dropping down from the red peaks. There. There you go. You can Now you can see the difference between 10 milliwatts of power and 500 milliwatts of power. So it's very good. So you can do that with... Uh, with all your different, well, I say all your different systems, with your 433 systems, it means you can put um, a 433 antenna on it and then put a GoPro near it. And uh, when you turn your GoPro on, you can see the noise coming out of your GoPro or your Mobius. Um, not so much with your run cams because they're very good, but again, you can, if you want to experiment with anything to see uh, if shielding's going to help, this is what you need to use. It's going to show you everything. Okay, so that was doing it all on the PC uh, with the NULEC, but with the RF Explorer, the great thing about it is you can take it out onto the site uh, that you're flying from, and that's mainly what you want to do. You want to scan from where you are, which isn't much good doing it from your PC. So, of course, there wouldn't be any point unless you could do it from an Android device. So, if you go to Google Play, um, again, this will be in the description, the RTL2832U driver for Android uh, will be linked in this video. Um, you go there, install uh, the driver, and again, Touchstone is available for Android too. So you install Touchstone, you plug in um, the dongle, and then in your tablet or in your smartphone, and then you can scan on the site you're at. So you know exactly where you're at. You can do if if you if you like number crunching like myself, and you you want to know what the noise floor and everything's like. There you go. You've got it. So, uh, yeah, I hope this has been of some use to you. Um, for, for 20 quid, it's, uh, it's worth a double. It's worth messing about with. And uh, it may be of some use. So, uh, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.